Yeah. And apparently, one of the th things I talked about in the last lecture about the uh, fundamental group and the second homotopy group of a compact Lie group, compact connected Lie group, uh, I probably didn't say things very well and uh, the person who took notes had some difficulty. So I'm going to repeat essentially that business once more and then say a few more things which also I think I've done, I did in the last lecture or, or even before that. but. You know, it's a long, it's a long gap. So I'm going to. This the assumption is going to mean some repetition. Okay, so G. It's a compact connected. That's a blanket assumption. Lie group. And G it's Lie algebra. Add is the adjoint representation of G <coughs> so it's a, one knows that add is completely reducible this means G breaks up into sigma g i i <coughs> g i irreducible it is a direct sum in fact irreducible sub modules which means that is they are ideals irreducible is the adjoint representative will mean that they are ideals, minimal ideals in G. <coughs> this is also the implication if you look at G i intersection G j, it is obviously equal to 0 if i not equal to j and which implies also that G i G j is 0 if i not equal to j. This means this implies again that g is a direct product of these minimal ideals. Let me denote by C the sum of all the trivial sub representations then clearly this means C is nothing but set of X G bracket for every A in G. Well, it breaks up into irreducible representations of G and therefore also of the Lie algebra because the group is connected, every representation of the group gives rise to a representation of the Lie algebra and the representation of the group is irreducible if and only if the representative algebra is irreducible. And so this means we are looking at the trivial. This when the when the group representation is trivial, the Lie algebra representation is also trivial. That means Lie algebra acts trivially on the subspace. So C is the sum of all the <coughs> trivial sub representations, which means C is precisely this set. So in fact, we can write this, this C plus sigma G is. I runs over some finite set each GI <coughs> is reduced 
as a G module, which means G i is a minimal ideal. And what is more, it is not abelian. In fact, you have bracket gi gi equal to gi. <coughs> Why is this? Because bracket gi gi is an ideal. This is the, by definition, this is the span of This becomes ideal, and it's a. We are assuming that GI is minimal, so bracket GI GI is either zero or equal to GI. It's not zero because <coughs> of this. It, we have removed the center out of that. So because of that, and we also know that GI GJ is zero for J not equal to I. So GI GI must be equal to GI because of the minimality. <coughs> so I'll say a real a compact Lie group is simple. If its Lie algebra is <coughs> admits no proper non zero ideal, okay. Now, I think I will prove the statement, I correct me if I have not, if G compact implies G is an almost direct product of its center, of, of its of the connected component identity connected component CG of its center. CG is the identity connected component so it is necessarily a torus. It is an abelian compact connected abelian group therefore it is a torus and bracket GG which is itself compact. In other words, what I am saying here is that the commutator subgroup, which a priori is not clear it is compact, but it is true it is compact. The commutator subgroup bracket GG is the group generated by G <coughs> is compact automatically and the statement is the natural map C cross bracket G G G given by X in C comma Y in bracket G G X into Y. So one more option because C is central <coughs> and from the direct product into G given by X Y going X Y is a <coughs> it's a subjection with a finite kernel. So G is a compact group and C bracket G I already told you is compact and this product map it is easy to check it is at identity this product map as uh, these are both the groups uh, uh, the tangent map at the identity here it is easy to check it is an isomorphism therefore locally 
there is an open set here which maps onto the open set and G is generated by any other any open set containing the identity. So, the mapping is subjective and the, so the tangent map is injective it is uh, clearly the for a covering. The kernel is some finite group. Okay. <coughs> so, this is a I think I, I did prove the statement I am not sure but anyway let's see. if I did not prove it let me know I will give a proof. Okay, so, this is the <coughs> situation and now the following conditions. So, any yeah the following conditions are what people usually do these days T f a e right the following conditions are equivalent 1 bracket g g equals g to the center of g g is compact group this blanket assumption center of g is finite and 3 the bilinear form the symmetric bilinear form x y going to trace add x add y on g is negative definite these three conditions are equivalent and a group satisfying a compact group satisfying these conditions one of these equivalent conditions is called a semi simple group so definition <coughs> G is semi simple if it satisfies one of the above conditions, one therefore all then the group is said to be semi simple. <coughs> so, for a compact group these conditions are equal <coughs> I will just now prove this statement. <coughs> Hold on this is uh, I do not know which is the order in which I want to prove this ok now. <coughs> Okay, so one implies two. You look at <coughs> if bracket g equals g, we know just now we have seen that g is actually equal to the center cross bracket g g. The center c is the connected component of the center of g in general. So if g equals bracket g g, obviously C must be trivial. C is trivial, which means that the Lie algebra of the center is trivial. Which means the center is finite. C is the Lie algebra of the center. So, <coughs> the connected component to the sorry the Lie algebra of C is, sorry no no not the, the, I said 
C cross G, 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 this is C is the connected component to the center, identity connected component to the center. So, if C is if the G equals bracket G, G, C has to be trivial, it is an almost direct product. Almost direct product with, with finite kernel that is the definition of almost direct product. Okay. So, because it is almost direct product if C is non trivial bracket G, G, can, G cannot be equal to bracket G, G if C is non trivial. So, it is trivial follows. So, the algebra of C is trivial which means the center is finite <coughs> 2 m plus 3 notice that if you look at at x. Now, I know that the <coughs> once again it is the yeah uh, we know that the the group at G leaves an inner product invariant, which means that the at of G, the corresponding D algebra element, leaving the inner product invariant means consists of skew symmetric matrices see what happens is, is at g is subgroup of the orthogonal group of a in a product and therefore its Lie algebra is contained in the Lie algebra of the orthogonal group which is skew symmetric matrices so at g consists in, in entirely of skew symmetric matrices which implies all eigenvalues Fat x are purely imaginary. If you have a skew symmetric matrix, all its eigenvalues are purely imaginary. <coughs> and once you know it's purely imaginary, that means what? Trace at x square is sum of purely imaginary things. I lambda lambda eigenvalue with <coughs> with multiplicity square is obviously less than zero unless all the lambda are zero. If all the all the eigenvalues are zero, then x is trivial, which means uh, uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, which means add x is zero, which means x is central. If this is less than zero, unless add it itself is 0. At least one eigenvalue is non-zero then the square is going to be negative all, all squares are <coughs> non-positive so some adds up. Okay, unless add x is 0 which means shows that but we, we, which that is unless x is in this center the algebra of the center. Uh, x is in the center of G, which is same thing as Lie algebra of the center. <coughs> so that, but we know the center is zero, and therefore, killing this form, it implies three. This form is non-degenerate. By the way, this form is known as the killing form on any G. The form x y going to trace at x at y is the killing form named after a German mathematician killing. <coughs> so, the killing form is negative definite when once the center is 0. Now, 
how do I get back into that again? <coughs> Why is it equal to bracket GG? The point is that if the killing form, suppose the killing form is negative definite, then I claim Okay, I will try to, okay. so assume that the killing form is negative definite, we have to prove that G equals bracket G. Now we know that G breaks up into the center times, it is an almost direct product bracket GG. <coughs> now, if the center is non-trivial, the killing, the killing form is going to be 0 on C and in fact, if C is not 0 and X is in its linear algebra, trace add X add Y is 0 for every y in g, but that means our this uh, implies x is perpendicular to every x is orthogonal to every y in g, but our killing form is negative definite. So, it can happen only if x is 0. So, center is trivial. So, what if the center is finite? I mean, center is non-zero, but finite then also the real algebra. No, I am only, I am looking at the real algebra of C. Yeah. So, real algebra of C is 0 means C is finite. That's real algebra of C is, C is the identity component of the center. The center modulo C is finite. So, if C is 0, that is all I want. I want center is finite, but that is not the point. You, G is the product like this. If, so the, if you take the commutator group G bracket GG, it will not be equal to G unless C is 0. So, we prove that C is 0 and therefore, so C is trivial and therefore, G is equal to bracket G, which is what we want, wanted to prove. So, we proved that 1 in plus 2, 2 in plus 3 and 3 in plus 1. So, as I said, that is the definition now. G is semi simple if it satisfies only the above conditions. And in fact, we will have not, we will be making use of this last condition very often in the, in the sequel. We will soon enough transform problems about the group into problems about the Lie algebra. And the fact that the Lie algebra, the killing form is negative definite is going to be, is going to play a crucial role later. Okay, now, Let me recall the, the theorem I proved last time, namely if G is compact connected semi simple, then phi 1 G is finite. This is due to Hermann Weil and phi 2 g is 0 if and phi 2 g is 0. This is due to E karta. The proof is along the following lines. I am recalling the proof I gave last time look T be a maximal torus.
And then we know that the Lie algebra G decomposes into a direct sum of eigenspaces, I should say, let me write G tensor C. decomposes as a direct sum of eigenspaces for at t and so <coughs> the eigenspaces that is there exists characters alpha from t into the unit circle a collection of characters I will call them alpha and delta such that if G alpha collection of uh, non trivial characters If G alpha is the eigenspace, V in G tensor C, add T V equal to alpha T times V for every T in T, then, then the Lie algebra G decomposes as a T. This is the Lie algebra of T direct sum in alpha, alpha and delta. <coughs> and because our original representation was on a real vector space, this you find that if alpha is in delta, minus alpha is also in delta. Because it decomposes into irreducible representations over real numbers. But irreducible representations of an abelian group over reals is can be of is either trivial or is of dimension two, and when it's of dimension two, when you complexify, you get two characters which are neg negative of each other. I, I'm using the additive notation minus. What I really mean is minus alpha t is alpha t inverse because the set of characters is an abelian group. I use the additive notation. So, when I say minus alpha is in delta, what I mean is minus alpha t is alpha t inverse. <coughs> okay, it decomposes like this, and I call an element x in t is singular if alpha x equal to 1 for some x. sorry for some alpha in delta. <coughs> this implies observe that centralizer of centralizer of any x contains in the Lie algebra contains g alpha plus g minus alpha for some alpha in delta and I will say an element x in t is regular if <coughs> if it is not singular. That means that is is regular if alpha t not equal to 1 for any alpha in delta. And let me denote by so this is the set of regular elements.
in T is denoted T regular T reg <coughs> and an element G in G is regular if it is conjugate to an element in T reg. So, an element in G is regular if it has a conjugate in T which is regular. If one conjugate is regular then every other conjugate has to be regular because any two conjugates will be differ by a conjugation by an element which preserves the torus and therefore characters if a character is non trivial on that element the transform of the character by the while group element will also be non trivial on that corresponding element <coughs> okay so and g reg will be set of regular elements in g now we have the following map g cross t to g consider a map let me call it phi phi of g comma t goes to g t g inverse g is in g and t is in t <coughs> i look at this map we, we have shown that every element in G has a conjugate in the torus, therefore this mapping is subjective. It is on to G. And now I look at the set of single elements, let me also give it a name T, okay, look at T minus T regular. Look at this set in T, it is an O, <coughs> it is going to be in a closed subset because it, it, you know, I, I said the element is singular, okay, regular elements are the complement of singular set. This, uh, so, maybe I should give that a name. T I will also call it, let me write T singular with set of elements T and T alpha t equal to 1 for some now <coughs> I look at the map I look at this map now and look at image of phi image under phi of t singular is obviously equal to G minus G regular. G regular is the complement of G of T singular. And the statement I have made two statements uh, claim one is that G phi of sorry image of Major the phi of G cross T singular. <coughs> now, first let me point out first that this mapping G cross T to G factors through G by T cross T because elements of T commute with every element of T is in T and therefore commutes with it. So, when I take the conjugation if I modify G by an element of the torus S T S inverse is going to be T itself and therefore the mapping factors through this. If we factors through the map psi. <coughs> Notice that uh, G and G, G by T cross T uh, have the same dimension. 
And the statement I want to make is the following. The G minus G regular is the union of closed submanifolds, I'm sorry, of locally closed submanifolds. Union of uh, finite, finite union, a uh, finite union of finitely many locally closed submanifolds. <coughs> so this is the I'll call it a claim. With closed submanifolds, all of which are of co-dimension greater than or equal to three. In G. The point is this <coughs> you see, if you take the singular set, that is, I look at this T singular set and I look at the mapping, if you and of course it factors through this and take, take for instance the set of points where alpha for a single take the set of uh, consider first. T alpha, which is <coughs> by definition T in T alpha T equal to 1. That is obviously a closed subgroup, the kernel of a certain character, and I look at this ele elements in this. Now, T alpha is a submanifold of T of co dimension 1. And when I look at this product, I restrict myself to T alpha here, then what happens is this, it factors through G mod rho centralizer of T alpha. Because every element in T alpha, <coughs> if you take any element in T alpha, it is going to commute to the centralizer of T alpha. So I can actually factor, pass this through to this. And now take the set of points, <coughs> if you look at the tangent map of this, it is going to be, how should I say, it, it will be a tangent map of uh, G mod central order of T alpha cross T alpha to G. I want to claim uh, at at any point of G by C T alpha cross T alpha minus union beta T section T beta beta not equal to plus minus that is I have this torus here I omit a large chunk again these are closed subsets each of them is of dimension 1 less than T alpha and I will take the union of all this as beta varies beta and delta of course <coughs> and then I look at this intersection and then if you omit this, it turns out at any point has the tangent map is injective. That means, which implies by the inverse function theorem or the rank theorem, if you like, it says that the image under psi of G mod T plus. T alpha minus this if we look at this image it has demand has dimension 
as co dimension three reason look at the g by z t alpha this space has dimension <coughs> two less than t because if you look at uh, centralized of t alpha it has in its Lie algebra the subspace g alpha and g minus alpha in the complexified thing so two dimensional space so this is it's of two, two this g minus g by z t alpha has two dimensions has two dimensions less than g by t to be two dimensions less than g by t this this quotient z, z t alpha consists of g alpha plus g minus alpha plus a torus all of that will be contained z t alpha and therefore the dimensions at g by t and I know that this mapping is the tangent map is injective so it shows image under psi has therefore is a, has is a sub is a locally closed sub manifold of co dimension 3. Now what is left G is hmm? small typos. sorry image under psi of uh, Image under psi of this, I mean, of, oh, okay. on this it factors through G mod sensitivity, so that is why it works out to be co dimension 3. And you can repeat the argument you take the set of points where two characters are trivial, two linearly independent characters are trivial, and then you find the dimension goes down further, and the image again you will get an open set in it which on which the mapping is of maximal rank, it is an injective, and therefore you will get a sub manifold, and so on. Step by step, you, you have to take you can in general look at T alpha q with, with this linear independent with alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha q linear independent look at this intersection on that this has gone the whole thing will go down by more than more than 3 dimensions certainly it will factor through g by z centralized of T alpha 1 cross intersection T alpha 2 etc. T alpha. It is much lower it is again this is a larger thing so more lower dimension and I can take the image and I exhaust the entire set of singular elements here by taking the union of these things each, each one of them will give you a sub manifold of co dimension at least 3 the image uh, co dimension yeah at least uh, co dimension at least 3. So dimension the whole thing is a union of sub manifolds for co dimension at least three. Now, I have to. Sorry, one, one second. If the tangent map is not injective, the image will be even smaller anyway. So why do you need the tangent map? To no, no, no. The point is that uh, I, I wanted to say it's a submanifold. It's a union of submanifolds. Of course. For that, the four dimension is okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that uh, that is more sophisticated topology. I have to be careful. It's, uh, it's mapping. See, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. It is uh, what do you mean by dimension and so on it becomes I, I, I do not want to go into it for a manifold I know what a dimension is for a smooth manifold I know what the dimension is and so on. So that so we I this claim is proved like this I mean I have obviously not given the complete details but it is easy to work out now what to what, what. yeah yeah one minute I will just take make one more statement and then I will certainly will go for my tea. <coughs> the next statement I want to make is a theorem in topology. I will not prove it, it says the following M manifold, a smooth manifold and V union of locally closed sub manifolds 
of co-dimension greater than or equal to k. Then pi 1 m to pi 1 of m minus v sorry the other way around pi i of m minus v pi i of m is on to if i is less than or equal to k minus 1 and is an isomorphism if i is less than k minus 1. This is a consequence of so called transverse regular approximation theorem. Any mapping of a sphere into the manifold can be approximated as closely as you want by a map which is transverse regular to any given submanifold. And you have to do it repeatedly for various the various submanifolds of very the, the, the submanifolds can be of different dimensions, but you do it one by one and you finally secure what you want. It moves so the whole mapping of the sphere moves away from this submanifold goes into the other ones, goes into the complement, into the regular limits. So any mapping is can be homotopped into a into the set of regular limits. Uh, yeah, if the so sphere you are looking at is at the appropriate dimension. I have given the condition for the you can move it away and we will use that presently. Okay, I am going to use this theorem. The claim we have proved, this theorem I am not going to prove. It is uh, as I said it is a consequence of so called transverse regular approximation theorem which uses among other things uh, <coughs> the fact that the <coughs> significant images of, of, uh, <coughs> of the critical set of a map has measure 0 that Sarge kind of huh? Sarge theorem. Sarge theorem yeah right it uses a Sarge theorem right. So, oh, because of the topology theorem we know that pi 1 of g regular to pi 1 of G is on to. So, it suffices to prove that pi 1 of G regular is finite. Oh, so, it is actually less more, more than it is enough to prove that this is finite. Now, how do I do that? I look at again the mapping G mod T cross T regular into G. This is a mapping which I called phi or yeah. This map is a covering. In fact, what happens is this notice that recall NT is the normalizer of T. G then NT by T which is usually denoted W and called the Weil group after Hermann Weil <coughs> is a finite group and we have action of W acts on G mod T. How you look at a G T and you want to make W act on that define this as G W T that is an action of W on G the fact that W normalizes the torus enables you to define it like this. So, you can you can you see therefore, you get an action of W on this you also have W also acts on binary conjugation on T because nt acts on t, t acts trivially. So, nt by t acts on t, t and the set of regular elements is clearly stable under inner conjugation because if you have one character 
it's taken into another character. If you take one of the elements in delta, it's taken into another element of delta by elements of W. So you really have uh, W acting on G mod T cross T regular and goes into G regular. You have the wild group action here. Uh, this okay is this map mm, so has the following properties uh, namely phi of taking element uh, u here and t here <coughs> and apply w u w t w inverse equals phi of u t w inverse from which so that is when w acts on the right here on the on the on this space here it is uh, you may take its image and up apply phi you get the same as the original image and this is actually a this is a covering map that is easy to check. You have to check that W acts fixed point free on this question. W actually acts fixed point free already on G mod T. So the, on the product it acts fixed point free. So that it shows therefore what you get is a covering. So to this is going to G regular phi is, <coughs> is a covering map. So, <coughs> so covering map with finite deck transformation group. Which means to prove the finiteness of this is enough to prove the finiteness of this. That is if you take a uh, not not quite uh, anyway I will put it. So you have this mapping <coughs> I'll take I look at a mapping of the circle S1 into G. You can't quite lift this map, but because it's a finite covering, by going to a finite covering you can lift the map. So you suppose you're given a map F. F lifts to a map of S1 tilde in G mod T cross T regular. This is a finite covering of S1. So after going to a finite covering S1 tilde, this lifts here. And suppose I am able to prove that this is homotopically trivial. Then it follows that some multiple of this element of the fundamental group is trivial in G because you have lifted it here and you make the homotopy here and then get down there. How do I, so what do I do here? What, so S1 tilde, the map is, it takes it, uh, so take Z in S1 tilde and F tilde of Z1 looks like something in G mod T. So let me call it F1 of S1, Z1 in G mod T, F1 is a mapping to G mod T times a mapping to T reg. Let us call it HZ, HZ. This is in G mod, this is in T regular. Now, suppose this H is homotopically trivial. Then what happens? You look at, so you look at HTZ which ends up in identity. So, it ends, ends up in a fixed point. 
Oh, actually, what I'll do is this following. I have G mod T cross T regular. This is contained in, it goes into G mod T. This is contained in G mod T cross T. And then the map actually factors like that. Okay. Now, I want to say that you take H is homotopy, suppose H is homotopy trivial in T. Suppose I know it is homotopy trivial, then I have H T which uh, with <coughs> equal to H when T is 0 and equal to identity when T equal to 1, the constant map. And what happens is this, this mapping now looks like F G, <coughs> sorry, F T, so mapping here and then you have the limit in T regular which is look at, oh, I think it is uh, bad notation. So, let me write S in S1 tilde, you have F S H T of S, look at this F S inverse. This is a homotopy between the original map F S H S and keep F S here if you like. <coughs> this when t goes to 1 this becomes fs inverse fs and so this is 1 here and this remains as fs but the image in g gives a homotopy of uh, f tilde with 1 to trivial. No, see I have got this map into G but G mod T cross T, I then look at G regular but then I want to go into G, sorry. I am interested in what happens to F tilde in G. F is this map from S1 to regular which I would like to prove is essentially homotopy retrieval at, at, after raising to some power. But raising to some power I get a map S1 tilde for, into regular which and, and, the, and the map obtained is like this, it goes into this and then goes there. That, that's how this S1, you had a mapping of, uh, <coughs> you had a mapping of S1 and that lifts to a map here. That does not lift a map here, but from S1 till that lifts a map here. And then look at this image in G mod T cross T and then go to G again. This lifted map I claim is homotopically trivial. This lifted map S1 tilde to G is homotopy considered as mapping to G. So actually mapping to G T cross T regular, but then compose with the multiplication and then get get to G. And then I claim it's homotopy trivial here because look at the way it behaves. Fs Fs inverse. See this goes into H T S after all. Under the under our map, it goes into H T S. The original map. Okay, the original map is FS, HS, right? This original map here, the lifted F tilde is FS, HS, F1, F1, S, HS. Now keep F1, S, but just home top this goes through HTS. But the homotopy is not valid in T regular but it is valid in T. Suppose I am able to do that. Suppose I am able to this uh, this this H is to T regular but suppose I am able to home top that in through H T S to trivial thing. Then I look at F S H T S and look at its image. It is going to go into a F S H T S F one S F one S inverse. When T equal to one, this is the constant map, so it becomes homotopically trivial. Okay. So uh, all that I have to prove is this mapping F tilde 
of the S1 tilde into T regular is homotopic to the constant map in T, not necessarily in T regular itself, but in T. But that is easy to prove for the following reason. What is T regular look? What does T regular look like? This is uh, can be thought of as RL by ZL. The torus T is like this, and I'm looking at RL, and I the various singular tori which I omit are going to come from the various hyperplanes alpha equals zero, alpha and as well as minus alpha both are so. so alpha equals zero will give you a hyperplane, and you get a number of hyperplanes like this. <coughs> and the regular elements are the complements of that, and that will break up into a number of convex sets. I mean, let me put it like this. So, it, it, see, if you take alpha not uh, alpha equals zero, that's just going to be a line like this, a plane, a hyperplane. For each alpha, you get a hyperplane. You throw out the hyperplanes, and then you get a. If you look at the complement to, of the hyperplanes, you get a number of convex cones. You get a number of convex cones, and what you are doing is you're looking at the. The regular elements will consist of the image of the interior of the convex cones. Okay. <coughs> now you have you have a mapping into regular elements, which means. Yeah. You, you have a mapping of uh, S1 tilde into regular elements. That means it, every, everything will get into, has to S1 tilde is connected, so it will have to go into one. If the, ma the mapping will have to go into the image of one of these chambers, as these cones. And what happens is this? how do I, how do I say this correctly? Sorry. No, no, yeah, the point is okay. Let's let me put it like this. The uh, no, there is a fundamental domain for the which will look like this. You know, there is going to be a lattice which the fundamental domain will look like this. So, when I look at the image, the various uh, the, the, uh, the T regular breaks up into number of connected components. Each of one, each one will look like this. Con some convex set like this. It's the intersection of one of these cones with the fundamental domain, which is a, a which again a con convex set. The image is going to be a connected set. If I include the boundary, the image will be a will contain the point identity as well, and the image therefore is going to be connected. I mean, it's going to be Contractible, the image is going to be contractible, so you can contract the uh, circle to a point inside there. Okay. <coughs> All right. So that is the that that shows pi one is uh, surjective. Now for pi two, you do the same thing. Point is surjective, and so again you are mapping S two into this. S two is simply connected, so you can actually lift it here. You have moved, so you are, looking, you are looking at a map of S2 into G, but it can be moved into S2 into G regular, and that can be lifted here because S2 is simply connected. But once it is simply connected, then again you go to again, again you do the same thing. You in the torus, the torus we know it is homotopy, the pi 2 of the torus is 0, so you can find a homotopy which takes it to 0 there, and then do the same trick. You have some Ft and then. So Fs and then some HTS and conjugation at the end it's identity, so conjugation will keep its identity. So that's the that's the way the proof works. So pi two is zero. So, so T regular is a disjoint union of open sets which are contractible. Each of them is contractible, right? That's the point. <coughs> yeah. So let me state that. Union of contractible open subsets, disjoint union.
So it will get into one of those disjoint unions and then you can in some sense uh, for the proof for pi 2 is easy, even easier because you do not have to bother about that. It is just have to note that it goes into t but it goes into t but pi 2 of t is 0. So you can home top it into. Covering is what right, right. So, what are the arguments for that? The, the, the while group action on the while group acts fixed point free, and the quotient is precisely that. It's precisely G regular. Yeah, right. Uh, did, did you prove that fact, or you assume, uh, Essentially, I proved it. Oh, okay. The point, no, the mapping is G regular. It's a ma the mapping is on to G regular. And just uh, so look at the fibers. What are the fibers? You want to look for. I see. I see. Oh, it's fixed point free, and the fibers are the while group. Oh, right. The while group acts. And the orbits of the group are precisely the fibers. So that's how you get the quotient to be G regular. Okay, so that proves pi one, pi two are zero. Okay, now. I think it's also a theorem that pi three is always z, right? Pi three is z. It's true, but uh, that's more difficult to prove. Uh, the, uh, well, pi pi three is z. Uh, that that pi three is. Uh, Tensor, ten, tensor Q is Q, this comes from uh, using Dharam theorem, using that uh, bi invariant forms, bi invariant forms give you the cohomology in the case of compact groups, that is thing which I have not proved. We, if you use that which involves Hodge theory essentially, then of course it will, you can easily prove that pi 3 is uh, or reals that is pi 3 tensor R you can show is R, but it is torsion free is little bit more delicate that pi 3 is torsion free. Okay, now well the next result I want to prove is the following G simple the group <laughs> then the only proper normal subgroups of G are finite and central. It is almost simple. If we if as a Lie group it is simple, it is as an abstract group it is almost simple, it is what it is. any normal subgroup is this. Okay. <coughs> Maybe I will not go into the proof of this, it is uh, it's not difficult because I want to get on with uh, to prove, uh, prove theorem about representation theory. So for the, for the present, maybe I will come back to it, for the present I will leave this as true. Okay, now next theorem I want to prove I will use again some topology <coughs> if G is semi simple connected of course is assumed compact connected is assumed if G is semi simple of oh, rank 1 then G is isomorphic to SU2 or SO3. Rem recall that rank G equals dimension of maximal torus. We we'll prove that all maximal torus are conjugates and so that is it. <coughs> Now here the idea is this, I am going to use some topology, this can be proved by other means, purely algebraic means, but I am going to use some topology to prove this. I am going to use the fact that pi 2 g is 0 to prove this. How do I prove this? Look at the mapping g <coughs> acts on really algebra by a joint action. And pick 
X in Pickup Wax Motors, which is of of dimension one, and let and let X in its linear algebra. be an unit vector. Well, as I know, we know that uh, the killing form is negative definite. So, we can take the corresponding positive definite form and talk of unit vectors. Once you have the, you have an inner product and so you have a unit vector. And let us look at the mapping G going to Gx, G at Gx. This is this factors through this actually this is a map this maps let us assume that dimension g let me take g equal to n <coughs> g to add gx maps g into the n minus 1 sphere. G is of dimension n, so x is a unit vector at g x will also be unit vector, so mapping it to unit sphere. And the so get so the, for this action the isotropy at x. So, you, you get an action of G on the unit sphere. In fact, any unit vector will map into another unit vector. So, get action of G unit sphere and this is the map and the isotropy at X is precisely is the torus. Whatever fixes X has to come from the torus because we also know that torus is maximal abelian because there is no other no further thing. So, that means get mapping of G to S n minus 1 which factors to G mod T. Now, this is a 1 to 1 map G mod T to 1 and it is easy to check actually that the this also notice that this also dimension n minus 1 and it is easy to check the mapping is of uh, maximal rank. The differential is uh, an isomorphism. And therefore, and this is compact, so it it is a homogeneous action, I mean it is an action mapping got from an action, so the, the rank is the same at all points and we know it is actually an isomorphism and therefore, the mapping is a local homeomorphism and it is clearly the image is both compact and open and therefore, whole, all of S and much one. So, this is a homeomorphism. So, you have this mapping G. S n minus 1. <coughs> now, T is a, this, this is a, it is a principal bundle with T bundle, T is one dimensional circle bundle on S n minus 1 and these are classified again some topology these are classified by pi 1 of S n minus 2. and clearly and which is 0 if n minus 2 is greater than or equal to 2 n greater than or equal to 
Yeah. N n minus 2 is 0 if n minus 2 is greater than 1 or greater than equal to 2, which means n is greater than equal to 4. Yeah, n minus 1, <coughs> which is same thing as uh, n minus 1 being greater than equal to 2. So the bundle becomes so classified by pi 1 of Sn minus 2. Circle bundles on the sphere at Sn, Sn minus 1 are classified by pi 1 of Sn minus 2. <coughs> Basically the idea is this, you have sphere and on the disk the bundle is trivial. You know, the two disks, uh, there is the lower hemisphere and the upper hemisphere on both of them the bundle is trivial. So fixed trivializations, the two trivializations will differ by a mapping of this into the circle GL1 to GL1 which is, which is a circle. So that is how you prove that uh, and the patching and, and the bundle is trivial if and only if it is homotopically trivial that is why you get this classification. So now look at this G mod T, G to G mod T you have the homotopy exact sequence which tells you that you have start with pi 2 G, G to pi 2 g mod t to pi 2 pi, pi, pi 1 of g the exact sequence goes like this. Now if the bundle is uh, trivial which is the case the moment n minus 1 is greater than 3, so n minus 1 greater than 3. implies the bundle is trivial which means this vibration is going to be trivial. The G to G mod T will have admit a section everywhere and so you will get the splitting like this pi 2 G mod T the bundle is trivial so pi 2 G to pi 2 G mod T will have a splitting and this you know is uh, 0 <coughs> which implies this is an injection. Let me, so let me put it like this. This means this implies that pi two, yeah, uh, g will g becomes the g to g mod t is a trivial vibration. So g becomes a product of uh, g mod t and t. Am I saying it right? Pi two two t is zero. There is something. Some. Sorry. Pi two. Oh, this is. Oh no. Pi, I, yeah. Sorry. This is pi one of t. Pi two g to pi two g to pi two pi one of t. <coughs> the sequence in the homotopy exact sequence goes like this. So pi one of g. <coughs> Right. Now, this is 0, so this becomes injective. There is some actually, and yeah, and actually, this split, yeah, yeah, we know that pi 2 g is actually going to be pi 2 g mod t cross pi 2 of t. So, this is 0, and therefore, you get. Uh, There is something, uh, something missing here. What am I saying? Pi 2 g mod t, this, pi 2 g becomes pi 2 g mod t and cross pi 2 t because it is a product. Pi 2 g is 0, I know, and therefore conclude that pi 2 g mod t is 0, but that is, that is not possible because pi 1 t we know is z the one circle, circle group, this is z and this is finite. So this is non-trivial, this is this uh, the, the kernel here is z which is same thing as the image of pi 2 g mod t which gives you a contradiction. 
pi 2 g becomes the product of pi 2 g mod t and pi 2 of t, pi 2 of t is 0, so it becomes the same as pi 2 g mod t, but pi 2 g mod t is non-zero because of this exact sequence and because pi 1 is finite. So from, th from this you prove, you, you conclude that <coughs> the only possibility that can happen is n minus 1 equal to 2, n equals 3. So the group G is of dimension 3 and then look at the adjoint action. It leaves in the internal product so it, it goes into SO3, it is an orthogonal group, it goes into SO3 and SO3 is of dimension C and it is a homomorphism so it is going to be a covering map. So the, the model of the center it is going to be the covering map because the adjoint representation the, the kernel of the center, so model of the center is is the covering map, but SO3 we know has only one covering namely a non-trivial covering which namely SU2. You take unit quaternions act, acting on itself by inner conjugation that is how you get the covering map, universal covering. So that proves that the theorem is that either G equals SU2 or SO3. If it is simply connected it has got to be SU2, okay. Okay, I think I am going to stop here, I am sorry I have been a bit hazy about some things, but anyway, so uh, <coughs> this next time I will talk about the representation theory of SU2 which is needed for the development of representation theory for the compact group in general. Okay.